and we're back. Hi guys, Ian from Q-Tips, and in this tutorial, this uh, this is a one of the last parts of this tutorial series. We're going to complete the layout, the layout by turning these lines into polygons. Now, a, a obvious, very quick solution would be to be able to just use an application to convert these lines into polygons. And there's one here called the where is it? Under Geometry Tools and it's lines to polygons. We select this and we're just going to create a temporary layer. We run it and nothing happens. Now there's there's clearly a, an issue with the geometry of this line layer or it could just be that um, there's an issue with the plugin. Now I've tried this exact same application in the brand new release of QGIS 3 and it does work. So I'm, I'm more inclined to believe that there's, there's a, an issue with the plugin. So that is not working, but there's always workarounds in GIS, and there's a workaround in QGIS as well. So we're going to remove this little layer that we've just created, and we're going to do something else. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer, and then we're going to chop it up. Actually, what we'll do is we'll create a new a new layer from scratch, and uh, as a polygon layer, and we'll just design that and chop that up uh, and make a polygon that way. So let's let's do that now. So we'll create a new layer, choose the same projection as the existing layers. Um, we can have a couple of fields in there like land use. Let's just add that one. We'll just use that one. Say OK. And we'll pop it in here. And what, what should we call it? We'll call it Okay, so we're going to call it layout poly for layout polygon. And it's been added. Let's just make it a, a reasonable color. Uh, actually, I wonder. For this example, maybe an orange. Okay, there we go. So we've got this new polygon. So let's start editing and what we'll do is we will use the advanced digitizing toolbar for, for this example and then some of the basic editing toolbars as well or tools as well. And we'll start editing for this layer. And now we can start capturing. So first thing I want to do is just capture the greater extent of the polygon. So I'll use this little option to add feature and just make sure my snapping options are right. I want to choose the yes the layout's fine and pixels is fine so that's actually going to work nicely and i can turn these two layers off because i'm not going to be using them and there we go so now we can see our snapping is working and we're just going to capture the full extent of this this layout site And we can do this stuff later. So actually, you know what? Uh, I'll do. I'll do. Why not? Say residential, because most of these um, properties are all going to be residential anyway. So by making that residential, um, these will all be residential. I only have to edit a couple of the polygons later. And so now we've got the blue layout line on top of my new poly. I just want to change the boundary thickness. So let's just go here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see what what part of my drawing's already been chopped up. So blue is already being used. And uh, oh, it's a nice ish color. Actually, that, that red's actually quite good. So let's say OK, apply. Okay, so now you can see if I turn this off, that that thick line, which is showing up underneath the, the thin layout line, belongs to the um, the poly. Actually, uh, uh, if I think about it now, there might be a, a better color for blue at the moment. You know, if we make that white, that shows up quite nicely. Okay. Right, so now we're going to chop this up. So, we're going to select the polygon underneath. And you know what? That doesn't work with the, with the yellow. So, just go backwards here. And make that blue again because that was a better option for this when something is selected. There we go. Okay, so let's start chopping this up. 
So we're going to use our split features option for this portion. All right, that's been cut now. And we can do the same thing for here. And the same thing here. So you can see as I go, wherever I see a fat line underneath, I know that that portion has been, or that land parcel has been chopped off and I don't have to do it. See how useful the snapping tools are. I don't have to zoom in because it's snapping to the vertices as we go. Okay, so now it'll only cut the selected feature, so I need to, to keep selecting the feature I want to cut and then move forward that way. Okay, so you see how that worked. It, it, it didn't take us too long, and it's just as accurate because we were using the snapping settings. And uh, we've taken advantage of the CAD tool in, in setting out the layout, but we just had to do a bit of a fiddle at the end here because we couldn't convert the lines into polygons and just created a polygon from scratch. And there we go. That's how it worked out. So now what we can do is we can just go in and, and label the rest of these. So now this is a roadway. So, whoa, okay, roadway, and I'm just going to make this say show selected features. Let's just drag this down a bit. Um, this bit here, I'm going to call the public open space. Are there any other public open spaces? Um, no. I'm just going to sort that dog on, dog out. Hold on a sec. Noisy dog. Um, okay, where are we? Okay, so if we show only selected features, there's only three of them. So we, we could use the little calculator tool here. We update an existing field, land use. We just type in POS for public open space, and we're updating the selected features. We say OK. Ordinarily, I might just go type those in or copy and paste, um, but just to show you that you can update quite a few records at once. What else is there? This is the owner's property, so and this is the clubhouse. So let's just call that one clubhouse. And this one, I we remember we said we were going to call this one the uh, show selected. This one was going to be not residential, but it was going to be the real estate. What would you call it? Administration. Let's call it, just, just call it admin. Administration. Okay. okay so that, that might be where you've got your real estate agents trying to sell these properties. And then once they're all sold off, that one also gets uh, sold off as a, as a residential. Um, okay, so here we go. And this one, um, owner. Let's just call it owner. And we're done. So we can save that. Stop editing. Let's just go in here. And now we can use those new categories to. 
Now what Q just does is it uh, to to show them up. So what Q just does when you when you do want to categorize on on a, a unique um, field value, it often adds in a little blank one. Now that blank one is so if you're in an editing session and you add a new a new value, but you don't actually fill something in, that it's that it's at least got something to show. Um, if you if you wrote roadway, it would obviously be pink. But if you were just ca capturing a new a new feature and didn't enter anything, it would still be shown. So we've everything's been labeled, so we can actually delete this. And then I'm just going to color these up according to this, this sort of town planning conventions that I'm used to, where, where residential is often yellow, like, like a lightish yellow, and outline width, okay. The public open space is always green. I've covered the stop. Whoop, that one's fine. The owner that can also be a yellow. Okay, the one can also be yellow, but possibly we should stick a hatch on top of it. Let's make it like a, a hatched yellow. Okay, there we go. The clubhouse. Maybe a purple, like a lightish purple. Okay. Administration. What is it? What is admin? Admin can be red. Red or orange. And then roadway. Yeah, this one we can make like a an orange, like that, or grey. I think maybe grey is going to complement the colours we've already got. Okay, so looking good. The uh, fat boundary is not ideal, so let's just put this back to 0.4. There we go. Okay, if we open that up, we've got our land use and our ID field, which is not populated. This we should, pro should probably be a unique ID. And since we've got 44 land parcels, we should probably just make this 1 to 44. And then also we could maybe even use that same ID as the earth number, uh, which when the, when the surveyors eventually go in, if they went in and surveyed this, they would um, give it their own earth numbers depending on which allotment this falls in uh, within the Western Cape. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to add the new field. Okay, so I've labeled, well not labeled, but I've, I've given those uh, new values in the table of contents, uh, the attribute table. I'll quickly label on those. So we're going to label, we're going to set the labels, label with the new earth label, I'll give it a buffer, uh, placement. Let's see how this looks. There we go. So what is this 15? Okay, this 15 is positioned around the centroid um, of the the road polygon. Now the centroid is not within the actual road polygon, so that's why it's way out here on the left. So if you wanted to be um, more accurate, you could move this 15 into the right place. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Something I just want to, to show you guys. Um, to render this in a different color, Ach, not color, big pardon. Uh, okay, not rendering. I'm changing the the transparency, and then just to turn on the the uh, open layers. So now uh, my open layers plugin is activated. So open layers is a plugin like the other plugins, and this is just a plugin which allows you to stream in the the OpenStreetMap 
uh, images, which are uh, you know, street maps or the Google satellite imagery or the Google topography, and that is uh, okay. Ah, okay. There we go. Open layers plugin. It's a core plugin, so it gets packaged with QGIS. You turn that on, that'll give you access to the the base layers as long as you have an, uh, an internet connection. So let's turn on the Google satellite imagery. Now, one thing to note that whenever you use OpenStreetMap or the open layers, it'll default to the pseudo Mercator projection. So just, just bear that in mind. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our little our project set up, and we can, uh, yeah, determine exactly. Uh, well, use this as a as a as a way to um, set up a layout, and then if if a developer came to us and and said that he wanted to know if it was going to be feasible to to develop this piece of land. And he wanted a minimum earth size of 700 squares. We could tell him that he could put uh, <coughs> how many residential properties? We want residential only. How many residential? There are 37. So he would need to make determine what he could sell these for to make this a profitable venture. So we could use 37 as his number. Maybe remove this one here. Make it 36 because this belongs to the owner, which maybe is him. Assume. Cool. Okay, so that's that's how you do that. And um, I think what I'll do now is just take this back into into Google Earth um, as a shapefile and see how that works. So yeah, follow on in the next section, and I'll show you how to to bring a shapefile into Google Earth. Cheers.